Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. This textured beauty features a Suzette stitch, a plunging neckline, which we don't do often, and it's a quick workup, so if you're looking for a quick turnaround project, this one's for you. Speaking of, if you want to make something quick and small, or a bigger project, we have you covered. We have hundreds of modern crochet patterns with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 3 yarn will work, but I used a total of 300 grams of yarn, and that's 450 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 4mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you could visit any country in Asia, where would you visit? I love anime and sushi, so Japan would be my spot. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using 4 stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 3 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 4mm hook and start off by making a chain the length that we'd like for our bottom band to be. So, measuring from our under bust down to where we'd like the top to be, so you can make this cropped or long. I'd like for mine to be cropped, so I'm going to make a chain from under bust to my waist. That's going to be a total of 4 inches or 10 centimeters, so I'm going to make a chain of 25. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, pull through both loops on our hook. Let's do that again. Insert your hook into that following chain, yarn over, pull through both, and then once more into that following chain, yarn over and pull through both. We're going to continue to put one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the falling row could be too tight to work into. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're going to do a back loop slip stitch row. So chain one, and flip our work. Now we're going to find the last stitch from our previous row, and then insert into that back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us. Yarn over, pull through both loops on our hook. Let's do that again, into that following stitches back loop, insert, and gently pull through everything on our hook, and that's that. We're going to continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we reach the end of the row. And when we do, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then repeat. So the first portion of the bottom band, which we are working on the front panel's bottom band, we're just going to be doing rows of back loop slip stitches with no increases and no decreases. We're going to continue on with this row until we get a bottom band portion that can stretch from mid underarm over to mid collarbone, making sure that we end on an odd number. And when we have that, I will meet you back. I am back and the first portion of my bottom band is all finished up. I have a total of 21 rows and my width is two and a half inches or six centimeters unstretched. Now from here, we're going to continue on with our back loop slip stitch rows, but now with an increase along the top until we reach mid chest. So to do our increase, we're going to start our following row, which is our next even number row, with a chain 2. That first chain is going to count as a stitch, and then that second chain is going to count as our turning chain, and then we're going to flip our work. 
we're going to insert our hook into that second chain from our hook's back loop. So we're going to skip one into that following back loop, gently yarn over and pull through both of our loops. Into that following stitch, insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and that is it. Continue putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We're going to do an increase into every other row, so at the end of this row, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we reach the end of the row. We have finished up our increase row and made our way all the way down to the end of our row. We did a chain one, flipped our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and now we're going to start our following row with another increase. So just like our previous row, we're going to start with a chain two and flip our work. Now we're going to find the second stitch from our hook and insert into that back loop with a slip stitch, and that's pretty much it. Continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now we're gonna continue on with these two rows until we now have a bottom band that can stretch from mid underarm over to the middle of our chest. And I will meet you back right after an odd number row to get started on our middle row. The first half of my bottom band is finished. I have a total of 37 rows. My width is now four inches or 10 centimeters unstretched. And we're going to do our middle row. We all should have ended along the top and our middle row is actually going to be a continuation of our previous increases just because we want a distinct middle row. So along the top, we're going to chain two and flip our work. Just like our previous rows, we are going to insert our hook into that second chain from our hook's back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, and then from here we're going to continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now before we make our way all the way down, we just want to make sure that we are inserting our stitch marker into that top stitch that we have so we know right where the middle row is. And now I can continue on with our middle row, so put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're going to chain one, Flip our work and then we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch leaving the last two so that we can now decrease together. We've made our way all the way down with our middle row and then all the way back up with our following decrease row so we can get started on the decrease side of our front band. We should have left the last two stitches so now we're going to start with our decrease. So inserting your hook into that second to last stitches back loop, yarn over pull through, and then into that last stitches back loop as well. When we have those three loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. And now that that decrease row is finished, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and for every even number row, it's just going to be a slip stitch row. So put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, leaving the last two. We finished up our back loop slip stitch row. At the end of the row, we did a chain one, flipped our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two, so we can decrease together once more. So just like the previous decrease row, into that second to last stitches back loop, insert pull through, and then into that last stitches back loop as well. And then when we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over, pull through all three. And from here, we're gonna continue on with our two previous rows for the same amount of rows that we have, for the increased portion of our front panel. When we have the same amount of rows, making sure that we're not including that middle row, I will meet you back. The decreased portion of my front panel's bottom band is now finished. I have a total of 54 rows and my width is now six inches or 15 centimeters unstretched. And now we're gonna close off this row with back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we started this piece off with that also had no increases and no decreases. So this part's gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna start with a chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And we're just gonna continue on like that until we have the same amount of rows as this first portion of our bottom band. And when we do, I will meet you back. The entirety of my bottom band is finished. I have a total of 75 rows and my width is eight and a half inches or 21 centimeters. And now we're going to single crochet along the top of our bottom band. So we should all end along the pointy end. And what we're gonna do is chain one. 
We're going to be putting one single crochet into every side row that we have. So just do the first one. We have this first side row right here minus this divot. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. Now this raised row is my following side row. So I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook in through there with just one single crochet as well. And since we're just putting one single crochet into every side row, we're going to have the same amount of single crochets as side rows that we have. And we just want to make sure that once we reach that middle row that we have, so that row that has our stitch marker into it, once when we work our single crochet into that side row, insert your stitch marker into that stitch so we know where the middle still is. When the single crochet row is finished, I will meet you back. So my single crochet row and just a little bit more is all finished. We're now going to get started on the cup and both of our cups are going to be done exactly the same way. That's why I already have one of mine done. I just want to make sure I had the right numbers for you guys. But since we're all getting started on the cup, we should all be along this outer edge. And for every size, we're all going to start with a chain two and flip your work. And now that our work is slipped, we're going to start our row one with an increase of two half double crochets. So all that's going to be is two half double crochets into that last single crochet that we did when we worked across the top of our bottom band. So into that last stitch, we're going to insert with one half double crochet and then into that same stitch, a second half double crochet. And now that we have that, we're going to just slip stitch it into the base and the base is that single crochet row. So just into that next available stitch, insert, yarn over, pull through everything. And now our row one is complete. That slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch. We just needed to connect it into the base. And now we need to work our way up to the following row. So we're going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base as well. So in there, yarn over, pull through everything and flip our work. Now that our work is flipped, we're going to get started with our first Suzette stitch. Now our first Suzette stitch or modified set stitch is going to be a single and double crochet into the same stitch. So into the last stitch from our previous row, since we should have two because those two slip stitches that we did don't count as our row stitches. We're going to find the last stitch from our previous row and insert with one single crochet. And then into that same stitch, a double crochet. Now we should have just one stitch left. So to end off this row, because we do need it to be blunt, we're going to half double crochet into that next stitch. Our row two is now finished. Now let's get started on a row three. So chain one and flip your work. Now getting started on our row three, we're going to do our first Suzette stitch. So into the last stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert with one single and also one double crochet. And for each of our odd number rows or into the rows that's working towards the base, we're going to close it off with an increase of three half double crochets. So we're going to yarn over and skip that following stitch. Now, after every Suzette stitch, we are going to be skipping that following stitch unless I state otherwise, because if we work into the stitch right after our first Suzette stitch set, that would count as an accidental increase, which is not what we want. So we're going to yarn over, skip that following stitch, and then into the stitch right after that, which should be the last stitch from our row, insert with three half double crochets. So there is my first half double into that same last stitch with my second and now into that same last stitch with my third. Now I need to connect it into the base and that's going to be done the same way as our previous rows. So just find that next available stitch into the base and slip stitch it into there. And now we need to work our way up to the following row or our row four. So slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base and flip your work. Now for every even number row or the rows we're working out towards the outer edge, we're going to start it with an increase of two half double crochets now. So yarn over, finding the last stitch from our previous row, making sure that it's not those slip stitches. We're going to start with two half double crochets into that first stitch. And then we're going to do our Suzette stitch. So we're going to skip one stitch and then into the following is going to be a single and then a double crochet. 
Now at the edge of every even number row, we should end with a total of two stitches. Into that last stitch, we're going to do a single and a double, which is a Suzette stitch per usual. And then we're going to add one more double crochet just to make the edge nice and blunt. So into the last stitch of every even number row, we're going to do a single, into that same last stitch, a double, and then into that same last stitch once more, another double, just like that. And now from here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So let's just get started on a row five together. So chain one and flip our work. So getting started on all of our odd number rows, it's gonna start with a regular Suzette stitch. So into the last stitch from our previous row, insert with a single and a double. And now we're gonna do our Suzette stitch until we have two stitches left. So after that first set, we're gonna skip one stitch and into the following, another Suzette stitch set. And a really quick tip, each of our sets are going to be worked into the previous rows single crochet to get the texture that we want. And we can tell that it's a single crochet because it's a little bit lower than the double crochet. So skip one into the following, a single and a double, and continue this until we have two stitches left. So skip one into the following, a single and a double. And when we have our two stitches left, we're going to do an increase of three half double crochets into the stitch that's nearest to the base or the last stitch from our previous row. So go ahead and insert in through that last stitch with one, with two, and with three half double crochets. And now we're gonna connect it into the base. So into that next stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch. Right after that, we need to work our way up to our following row, which is our next even number row. So slip stitch into that next stitch into the base and flip our work. Now, like I said, each of our even number rows is gonna start with an increase of two half double crochets. So yarn over, inserting into the last stitch from our previous row, one and two half doubles. Right after that, we're going to skip the following stitch, then into the stitch right after that, our Suzette stitch, so a single and a double, and then our Suzette stitches till we have two stitches left. So skip one, into the following, single and double, skip one into the following single and double crochet again. And now that we have two stitches left into that last stitch, it's always going to be a single, double, and then another double crochet. So skip one into the last stitch, a single, a double, and then also another double crochet to keep this edge nice and blunt. From here, we're gonna to continue to repeat these two rows until this portion that we have, making sure that we're placing that single crochet row right underneath our bust line, until this point that we have right here can reach right underneath our underarm, and I will meet you back right after an odd number row. And when we're measuring this piece up to ourselves, we wanna make sure that we are stretching the bottom band as if we're wearing it. Because if we don't, it could seem like the bottom band is curved or the top half is pointed in a separate direction, but if you tug on it, it should all stand up to be a straight line. So the underarm portion for my cup is finished. I have a total of 13 rows and my cup height is four and a half inches or 11 centimeters. And right before we get started on the following portion of our cup, we do wanna make sure that we're inserting our stitch marker into the edge of that last row that we did just so we know that increase ends. From here, we're going to be doing more Suzette stitch rows but now without the increases. So we get this portion that cuts in front of our body and then we can go in with our strap. So this part's gonna be pretty simple. The last row that we did should have been along the base. So we're gonna slip stitch into that following stitch into the base and then flip our work and do our Suzette stitch all the way down. Now just to do the first one, find the last stitch from our previous row, insert with one single and one double crochet. Skip one into the following, a single and double, and continue with our Suzette stitch until we have two stitches left. We have made our way all the way down. We have two stitches left. And now all we're gonna do is half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. From here, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and then do our Suzette stitch all the way down, leaving the last two stitches again. And then I'll remind you how we're gonna connect it into the base. Now that we've done our Suzette stitch back down, we should have two stitches left. And just like how we ended the previous row, we're just gonna half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And then to connect it into the base, find that following stitch, 
slip stitch it into there to close off this first row. And then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch. Flip our work, and then we're going to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases until we have a portion that can cut in to the front of our body. And then also taking a look at the base, so if we're following this down, from wherever we're at to the point of our bottom band is going to be the width of our strap. I wanted the width of my strap to be just about two and a half inches or six centimeters. So I made sure that I left that amount of stitches left so that I had enough space for my strap. So continue on with these rows and I'll meet you back right after an even number row. Now the width of my cup is all finished. I have a total of 26 rows and my width from stitch marker to where my working yarn is, is a total of three and a half inches or nine centimeters. Now from here, we're going to make an even number chain that reaches up to the top of our shoulder. I need a total of four inches or 10 centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain 20. Now for this first shoulder row, we're just gonna do our Suzette stitch all the way down. So block off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook insert with our first Suzette stitch set. So a single and a double. Skip a chain and then another single and a double. Continue on with this, making our way all the way down. Keeping in mind that once we reach the body portion of our Suzette stitch detail, each of our sets is still going to be worked into our previous rows of single crochets just to double check and make sure that we get the texture that we want. When we reach the base, we're gonna slip stitch it into the base the same way that we've been doing this entire time. Then we're gonna slip stitch into that next stitch into the base to work our way up to the following row and then do our Suzette stitch, making our way down until we have a total of four stitches left. So we've made our way all the way down with our first strap row, made our way all the way back up, leaving the last four stitches. Now into every row that ends along the outer edge, we're now going to do a decrease of three half double crochets because we need this top shoulder portion to be parallel with the bottom of our bottom band. So what we're gonna do is yarn over, skip that following stitch and we should have three stitches left. So into that third to last, pull through, into that second to last, pull through, and then into that last, pull through. We should have one, two, three, four, and five loops on our hook. So from here, yarn over, pull through all five. And from here, it's going to be a repeat of these two rows. So a Suzette stitch row working down towards the bottom with no increases and no decreases. And then a Suzette stitch row working our way out towards the outer edge that ends on a decrease of three when we have just four stitches left. We're going to continue on with these two rows until the last row that we have is worked into that stitch marker stitch within the bottom band. When we have that, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. Then I will meet you back. All right, so we have just finished up our front panel and now we're gonna get started on our back. We're gonna start with the back panel's bottom band and we're all gonna need to start by making a chain, the same amount of chains that we made for our front panel's bottom band. I made a total chain of 25, so I'm gonna make a chain of 25 here. And this bottom band is gonna be pretty simple. It's just going to be rows of back loop slip stitches until we have the length that we need. So just to do the first row together, we're gonna to block off that last chain, do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off for the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch, remembering not to tug too tightly. So insert and pull through both loops on our hook. From here, we're gonna to continue to put one slip stitch into every chain at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then that's it. The back panel's bottom band isn't gonna have any increases or decreases, so we're just gonna continue on with our back loop slip stitch rows until we get a portion that can stretch from mid underarm across our back over to mid underarm. When we have that all finished up, I will meet you back right after an odd number of rows. I'm back with the bottom band for my back panel. I have a total of 75 rows and my width is eight and a half inches or 22 centimeters unstretched. Now we're going to single crochet across the top of our bottom band. So pretty much the same way that we did the front panel. So since we're along the top, we're gonna pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. We're gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row. So just to do the first one, I'm gonna insert my hook in through that top loop and then I'm going to single crochet. Find our following side rows top loop, which is this raised row, insert, and then another single crochet. 
Keep doing this to reach the end of the row, and we should have the same amount of single crochets as side rows. Now that our single crochet row is finished, we're going to do our Suzette rows with no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have for the front panel's height. So for the same amount of rows that reached all the way up to our underarm. I have a total of 13 of those rows, so let's just get started on the first one together because the rest are going to be a repeat. So along the edge, let's do a chain one and flip our work. Into the first stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert with a single crochet and a double crochet. Skip one stitch into the following, another single and a double, and then that's it. We're going to continue this until we have two stitches left. When we do, we're going to skip that second to last stitch and then half double crochet into the last. From there, we're going to continue to repeat that row until we have the height that we need. So for the same amount of rows as our underarm rows for the front panel. When we have that, I will meet you back. So the underarm portion for my back panel is all finished. I have the same amount of rows as the underarm portion for my front panel, so a total of 13 rows for me. And now we're going to start working on the underarm portion. And we also want to make sure that we're inserting our stitch marker into the edge of this last underarm row along both sides, just so we know where this ends and where the underarm starts. So all we're going to do is do a decrease of three at the end of every row. So from here, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then we're going to do our Suzette stitch, making our way all the way down until we have four stitches left. I am at the end of my first underarm row and I have left one, two, three, four stitches left. So all we're going to do is yarn over, skip that fourth to last stitch, and then into the third to last, insert, pull through, into that second to last, pull through, and then into that last stitch, pull through for a total of five loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and that is our decrease of three half double crochets. Now all of our rows are going to be a repeat of this for the same amount of rows as the width portion of our front panel. So just as a visual, we're going to be maintaining that row where we do our Suzette stitch all the way down and we end the row with a decrease of three half double crochets for the same amount of rows that we have from here all the way up till we reach our shoulder. And when we have that amount all finished up, I will meet you back so we can get started on the upper back portion. So my underarm rows are all finished. I have a total of 26 rows and this height is roughly six and a half inches or 17 centimeters. And all we're going to do from here is more Suzette stitch rows, but now with no increases and no decreases until this portion can now reach the top of our shoulder. So from here, just chain one, flip our work and then Suzette stitch all the way down. When we have two stitches left, just half double crochet into that last one and then repeat. When we have the entirety of our back all finished up, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. I am back and the entirety of my back panel is finished. I have a total of 38 rows and my length is just about nine inches or 23 centimeters. And now right before we seam everything together, we're just going to need to single crochet across the top of our front panel. So we're gonna start by inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of the front panel, and then we're just gonna single crochet across pretty much the same way that I did over here. So let's do this together. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row. So start by finding our first side row and this is mine right here. I'm going to insert my hook in through that top loop. And if we have a tail end, just place that over our hook and single crochet around it to weave it in as we go. Let's do this again. This is my following side row. I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook, and single crochet around my tail end, and that's it. Continue putting one single crochet into every side row. When we don't have any more left, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. And now that we have finished single crocheting across the top of our front panel, we're now going to seam everything together. So first things first, let's place our front panel on top of our back panel and then insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through everything, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now we're only going to be doing an outside loop slip stitch seam for the bottom band, and then we're gonna do another type of seam for the body. So to do our outside loop slip stitch seam, 
Find that first stitch into the front panel and insert only into that front loop. Find the next stitch into the back panel and insert only into that back loop. And then when we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop and pull through everything. And then that's it. We're gonna continue this for the same amount of chains that we made for our bottom band. So for me, 25. And then I'm gonna do a chain of one cut and then repeat on the other side. So now that the seam for the bottom band is finished, we're now going to seam the underarm portion for the body. Now what we're gonna do, this is going to be a single crochet seam. So we're gonna want this seam to be along the inside. So first things first, make sure that our work is now flipped wrong side out, meaning the seam that we did for the bottom is now flipped along the inside. And then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the last stitch that we have for the single crochet row that we did before we got started on the body for both the front and the back panel. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now this seam is gonna be pretty simple. We wanna make sure that we are using a medium to loose grip and we're gonna be doing a single crochet row making our way all the way up until we reach our stitch marker stitch along the side. So we're gonna be alternating between one to two single crochets, working into both the front and the back panel. So to get the first one started, let's find our first side row within the front panel. This is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop. Next, let's take a look at the back panel, find that first side row, which this is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook in through there. And since we have a tail end, I'm gonna place that on top of my hook and single crochet around everything. Now into the following side row, it is going to be two single crochets. So this is my following side row right over here. I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook, and then find our next side row within our back panel, which this one is mine right here. Insert my hook into that top loop as well with one single crochet, and then one more single crochet into the same side rows, and it should be a little bit easier since they should be gathered. So in through that same top loop within the front panel and the same top loop within the back panel and then single crochet. And then that's it. Let's do the next set of rows together. This is my following side row for the front panel. I'm gonna insert my hook in through that top loop. Find the following side row within the back panel. This is mine right here. Insert into that top loop as well and then single crochet. And then into the next side row, two single crochets. So this is my following side row. I'm gonna insert in through there with one into my following side row, which is this one right here, insert with one single crochet, and then into that same side row, another single crochet. So into the front panel and the back panel, and then single crochet them together. And we're gonna continue to do this until we reach our stitch marker stitches. Do a chain up a one and cut once we do, and then repeat on the other side. So now that the entirety of our sides are all seamed up, the last thing we're gonna have to seam is our shoulders. And this is gonna be a single crochet seam, so same as we did for the body. So we still need to make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out. Next, we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through everything, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to put one single crochet into every stitch, making sure we're working into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So this one's gonna be a little bit easier than the body. So finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook. Finding that first stitch into the back panel, insert your hook in through there, and then single crochet them together. That's it, let's just do one more. Find the next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook. Find the next stitch into the back panel and insert your hook as well, and single crochet. And then that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left within the front panel to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat on the other side. So now that everything is all seamed together, we're now gonna get started on our cute little ruffle sleeve. So we're gonna make sure that our work is now flipped right side out. And then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. And we're going to start with a single crochet row. So inserting your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. We're gonna alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row. 
and then one single crochet into every chain, making our way all the way up and over. So since we already know how to do this, let's just do the first few together. This is my following side row right here. I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook with one single crochet. Find our following side row, which this is mine right here. And all I'm going to do is insert my hook into there with two single crochets. And then that's it. We're just going to keep doing this, making our way all the way up and over. When we make our way all the way down to the other side, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I will meet you back. So my single crochet row is finished, and now we're going to get started on our first ruffle row, and this is going to be pretty simple. So to get started on the following row, we're going to do a chain two. And for this first Suzette stitch row, we're going to to start and end this row with a decrease of three half double crochets. So we're going to yarn over, find that first stitch from our previous row, pull through that next, and then that next for a total of five loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through all five of those loops. Then from here, we're going to be putting one Suzette stitch set into every stitch. So into that next stitch, insert with a single and a double into that following stitch. So for this row, we're no longer skipping every other stitch, another single and a double, and that's it. Continue putting one Suzette stitch set into every stitch, making our way all the way up and over until we have three stitches left. So I've made my way all the way around with my first Suzette stitch row, leaving one, two, three stitches. And now we're going to close this row with a half double crochet decrease of three as well. So yarn over into that third to last stitch, pull through, last stitch, pull through, and last stitch, pull through. Should have one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. So yarn over, pull through all five. And now this following row is going to be our regular Suzette stitch row. So we're going to chain one and flip our work. And now that our work is slipped, we're all going to start with four single crochets. So into the last stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert with one single into that following stitch, our second single into the following with our third and then into that following with our fourth. Now, after our four single crochets, we're going to chain one. Now it's not going to count as a stitch. We just want the height because we're now going to start our decrease of three half double crochets. So yarn over into that following stitch that we have. We're going to insert pull through into that following stitch, pull through and into the stitch right after that, pull through. Should have one, two, three, four, and five loops on our hook. So we're going to yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and insert a stitch marker into the top of that stitch as well. This is going to be the first official stitch for this row because the single crochets that we just did don't really count as stitches for this row. We just needed to work our way in towards the sleeve just a little bit since we don't want it to end along the edge. But right after our decrease of three half double crochets, we're going to skip the following stitch and then into the stitch right after that, which should be a single crochet stitch. We're going to do our regular Suzette stitches. So a single and a double. And just to do the following with you guys, we're going to skip that following stitch and then into the one right after that, another single and another double. Now continue to do our Suzette stitches. Now making sure that they're within every other stitch until we have a total of nine stitches left. I have made my way down with my row three or my second Suzette stitch row. We should have all stopped when we had nine stitches left. And here are mine. Here is one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. Now we're going to close off this row with a decrease of three half double crochets. So let's all yarn over. We're going to skip that following stitch and then into the stitch right after that, pull up a loop, stitch after that again, pull up a loop, and then once more, pull up a loop for a total of five loops, yarn over, pull through all five. Now this row is all finished up. Now from here, we're going to repeat our previous row until we get the length of the sleeve that we want. So I'm just going to get started and end the following row with you. So start with a chain one and flip our work. Now, just like the beginning of our previous row, we do need to do four single crochets because we want to start our following row closer to the middle. So into that first stitch, one single into that next stitch, 
a second single into that next, a third, and then a fourth single crochet. From here, we're gonna chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch. We just want the height for our decrease of three half double crochets that we're about to do. So yarn over into that following stitch, pull through into the stitch after that, pull through and then into the stitch right after that, pull through for a total of five loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all five. And now we're going to do our Suzette stitch. So skip that following stitch and then into the stitch right after that, which should be a single crochet from our previous row, a single and a double. Skip the following stitch and then into the stitch right after that, another single and double, and continue this until we have a total of nine stitches left, remembering that the last stitch in this row will have our stitch marker in it. We've now made our way all the way around and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine stitches left. Now we're gonna close this row off with a decrease of three half doubles. So yarn over, skip that following stitch, into the stitch right after, pull through, one after that, pull through, and then once more, pull through, pull through all five of those loops, and now this row is all finished up. We're now gonna to continue to repeat the row that we just did together until we get the sleeve length that we like. And once we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. Right, I am back and I have just finished up both of my sleeves. I have a total of 11 rows and I am now all done. Last thing we have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.